You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. All right, you ready, Rachel? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks. Hi, I'm Murph. You know Murph. Murph's here to do an, an, an upgrade. Ooh, a Doctor Who upgrade, a, <laughs> a very Doctor special Who. upgrade. This is the this is the first of four Doctor Who upgrades. Uh, there's four brand new commander decks that are themed around the themed isn't isn't even right. They're built around yeah. the world of Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, all of these have a ton of new cards that are designed around specific Doctor Who characters and episodes and worlds, uh, and it has a number of reskinned reprints with new Doctor Who art. Uh, today we are upgrading the Timey Wimey deck. Uh, it is Jess Guy. It's blue, red, and white, and it has a special focus on time counters and all that that entails. We're going to talk about it a little bit more once we get into it. We're going to go into the stats of this deck, talk about what is in the box when you buy it off the shelf, and we're going to do an upgrade to make sure it is in fighting shape when you take it to your next game night. But first... We're going to talk about a lot of magic cards today. If you want to pick up any of the cards that we're talking about or this beautiful sealed box of magic cards, go over to cardkingdom.com slash command to pick up all of the Doctor Who singles that you're after or any of the cards that we talk about in this upgrade. Card Kingdom has a huge selection of magic cards and they have all of the many different versions of magic cards in the different conditions that you were looking for so that you know you are paying what you want for the magic cards that you want. Plus, Card Kingdom has this enormous selection so you can get all of the cards you're looking for in one easy place and they will ship it in one package that is safely sealed up with a little token and sticker and it delivers to you all in one package on your doorstep i love card kingdom especially when i'm picking up a new commander deck i don't want to chase envelopes from all over the country making sure that they all got there before my next game night i want to look for one package get it sleeved up and get ready to play yeah once you have the cards you just want to put them in yeah leave it up ready to go and speaking of sleeves our other sponsor is Ultra Pro, if you go to ultrapro.com slash command, that's the best place to go to buy all of your Ultra Pro products, game accessories, uh, like I said, sleeves, play mats, deck boxes, dice, basically anything you could ever want or need that's a game accessory to help you play the game of Magic the Gathering or tons of other games as well. Uh, they have a ridiculous inventory, tons of sales all the time. So definitely go check it out, uh, ultrapro.com slash command. Yeah. And uh, the other way to support the show is directly over at patreon.com slash command zone. Yes. All of our patrons are truly the lifeblood of this company. You guys keep these episodes rolling out and all of our cool new content getting better and better. Plus, patrons. there is some cool perks for our patrons. You get to see episodes of Extra Turns and Game Nights early. Uh, and you get uh, one lucky patron gets shouted out every single podcast episode. And this one is dedicated to, to John, John and Aunt Koyak. Koyak. Thanks, John. You rock. You do rock. All right, let's get into it. We are going to talk about the brand new timey wimey precon uh we're eventually going to we're going to do this upgrade we're going to add 10 cards we're going to take 10 cards out but before we make any of those big decisions we want to talk about what is in the box so we know that we are making the upgrades that are right for the deck and right for you the player so first let's get to know the commanders of this deck yeah so this deck is built around mostly the early reboot seasons of Doctor Who, so Ninth Doctor, Tenth Doctor, Eleventh Doctor, is basically the time periods that it covers. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to see the Doctors from that era, a lot of characters from that era in this box. So if that's the era of Doctor Who that you fell in love with, that really excites you, like me personally, uh, then this is the deck that you're probably one going to go for. Yeah, I normally this section where we talk about the potential commanders for it's not that uh, long. The, it's yeah. like two. Normally, maybe yeah, three. there's like two. <laughs> it, lately, they've been doing like two new commanders and a, and a reprint commander yeah. that could be the commander of this deck. But what they did with Doctor Who is because there's so many doctors and there's so many beloved characters, there are a ton of options that could be your commander straight out of the box. So we're gonna we're not gonna talk about all of them. Otherwise, we would be talking about like eight nine options, and not many of them work particularly well together. So. We're going to talk about the most synergistic 
co- commanders, and we're going to talk about the ones that you may be drawn to the most. Uh, starting with the face commander. Yeah, so the face commander is the 10th Doctor, uh, David Tennant. So it's three blue and a red legendary creature. Uh, it's whenever you attack, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. Put three time counters on it, and it gains suspend. You can also pay seven mana to time travel three times, which basically is you can add or remove time counters. You can control those time counters. Yeah, uh, and huge it, activated ability. Huge activated ability. And this also pairs with Rose Tyler. So the way that all the doctors and companions work is that all the companions can pair with the doctor. So Rose Tyler adds white, so this is a Jeskai precon. She's one in a white, legendary creature human. She gets plus one, plus one for each time counter on her. When Rose Tyler attacks, put a time counter on her for each suspended card you own and each other permanent you control with a time counter on it. And she's a 2-2. Uh, and again, it pairs with a doctor. Uh, out of the box, it pairs with the 10th doctor, but theoretically, you could pair it with any of the doctors from any of the potential precons, like yeah. not just from the set. Doctor's Companion is really interesting because yeah. it basically is like partner with, but it's for, with any of the doctors. And originally it was written that like it can partner with any creature that is a time lord doctor. Yeah. It has to have exactly that creature type. It cannot have those creature types and more. So you cannot pair these with Orvar or Morophon, nope. you maniacs. Sorry. Uh, no, I wanted to do that. <laughs> I wanted to add color to Orvar Morphon so plus bad. Rose Tyler. <laughs> like I would, the blue, blue, green Orvar. Come on. Oh, Come on. Yeah. So I, they uh, definitely structured this and worded it so that these work kind of in a vacuum They're kind of like the uh, Stranger Things Friends Forever yeah, pairings Friends Forever for sure where you're just taking stuff from that pool of cards and trying to pair together what you find to be the most interesting yeah, we didn't we didn't mention this as and it is a weird time to talk about it, but I you're a big fan of Doctor Who. Yes. And you so <laughs> especially especially this uh this precon. So I was really excited to get you to do this upgrade. Uh but also I play this this deck on the Doctor Who episode of Game Nights. Yeah. So uh it's a very exciting episode for us both because this deck is is uh is very familiar for both of us. Exactly. Uh, I played the face commander, the 10th doctor and Rose Tyler in, um, in game nights, but there are more options. For example, the ninth doctor is also one, a blue and a red. So it's, is it, uh, and it is a legendary creature time Lord doctor. It has haste. And whenever the ninth doctor becomes untapped during your up untap step, you get an additional upkeep step after this step. Uh, he can also be paired with Rose Tyler is she is the only, I believe she's the only related white doctor's companion option yeah she's the only white doctor's companion option also in she's set. she's in episodes with the ninth doctor yes. as well yes rose tyler started out with the ninth doctor and then moved on to the tenth doctor yeah the ninth doctor is interesting you're like double upkeeps what does that even mean yeah it's like paradox haze which paradox haze has always been kind of a weird card yeah it's very good with certain strategies and when you have time counters it certainly is impactful uh if you have cards on suspend removing like having two upkeeps means you remove two time counters on your upkeep yeah uh if you have cards with vanishing which are also in the deck it means that you remove two vanishing like two time counters that's usually from vanishing not cards. what you want for vanishing cards sometimes yeah. you do but not always so it's, it's a little bit interesting it's a little finicky we're gonna see how the ninth doctor interacts with the deck overall what the numbers look like in just a moment yeah. but the ninth doctor is an option as well yeah and so another option is the 11th doctor now the 11th doctor is uh one white and a blue so no red with the 11th doctor uh this one's whenever it deals combat damage to a player you may exile a card from your hand with a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value and then it gains suspend you can pay two mana to have a small creature with power three or less uh not be able to be blocked this turn uh, and he himself is a three two so the 11th doctor Obviously, you can't really pair with Rose Tyler if you want to play this out of the box, yeah. because then it would just be a blue-white deck. Uh, so probably what you would want to do is pair it with Amy Pond, the 11th Doctor's a companion. Uh, <laughs> she's two in a red. Uh, when she deals combat damage to a player, choose a sp- suspended card of your own and remove that many time counters from it, but it also partners with Rory Williams. So then it can go and get Rory Williams from the deck. So this one's really interesting because... Yeah. You can basically have three commanders. <laughs> it's wild. So, yeah. yeah, Amy Bond is a three drop. The 11th Doctor is a three drop. But it goes to search up Rory Williams, who yep. is a two drop and is also white and blue. Yep. So, technically, this deck could also be Amy Bond and Rory Williams. Yep. Uh, but read Rory, Rory for us as yeah. well, just so we know. This one's a first strike lifelink. It's a two mana three three. Uh, whenever you cast the spell from anywhere other than exile, you have to exile it with three time counters on it. And it gains suspend, then investigate. So, so you have to cast Rory from Exile, otherwise it just goes on suspend and you get a clue. Right. 
Uh, so if you cast it for your hand for white and a blue, then you you have three turns until Rory is coming back. Yeah, he is the last centurion. He is waiting for Amy. Yeah. Although, honestly... Well, Amy's waiting yeah, for him. Yeah, Amy feels like he's, <laughs> she's waiting for him. But, <laughs> point being... <laughs> he's slow. Yes. Uh, this is a very interesting combination yeah. of cards. The 11th Doctor puts things on suspend, mm-hmm. but only when it deals combat damage. And it things through, though. Uh, but yeah, it can it can also give itself evasion for two additional mana. And it's the number of time counters equal to its mana value. So he's better for suspending cheap spells. Yeah. And then Amy, when she deals combat damage, which the 11th Doctor can also help her get through, she removes that many. Oh, then the amount of damage she's dealt. Yes. She removes that many time counters. So if she deals two damage, uh, then she'll remove two time counters. From right. it. So it'll, it'll help you cast those spells that you just put on suspend with the 11th Doctor, presumably. So you can put stuff on suspend for free and then cast them for free, but you are spending a lot of mana to give them evasion. Uh, and Rory is just like a suspended guy. <laughs> yep. He's, <laughs> he's just a, there. He's hanging out. He's yeah. He gives you clues, gives you some value. It's uh, interesting. It's yeah. nice having three cards in the command zone, but I don't. these don't seem pr- as impactful as the other ones that we've talked about. Yeah. And then the last one uh, that we're going to talk about is Kate Stewart. Uh, one blue, red, white. Uh, so this is just not a doctor, obviously. It is Straight up Kate Jessica. Stewart. Um, Human scientist. Yep. Whenever you put one or more time counters on a permanent you control, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token. Note permanent, not exiled card. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever Kate Stewart attacks, you may pay eight. And if you do, attacking creatures get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of time counters among permanents you control. So Kate's interesting because she wants, she doesn't really care at all about time counters of suspended things Mm -hmm. or things in exile. It's just how many time counters do you have on permanence? So again, like things with vanishing or things of that nature. Yeah. Um, We'll talk about how many of those are in the deck before. Kate is a much more straightforward Mm -hmm. commander. It's like, if it has time counters on it, make a guy, then you get your guys get as big as the number of things that you have. So it's a, it feels like maybe if you're new to Commander, Kate is intended to just be like, throw Kate in the command zone. She will do the thing yeah. relatively reliably without managing a ton of crazy stuff. And she's decent at closing out too. Like she pumps yeah. the team. She's a win kind. It's like whenever you want, whenever you want a crater huff, there you go. You can have a crater huff, yeah, right? Eight exactly. mana. Exactly. Yeah. It's not uh, too bad. So Kate is a very straightforward build out of the Commander command zone Uh, all right let's meet the deck we're going to talk about the contents of this box mechanically we like to break it down in terms of the general commander vegetables the things that we are used to seeing ramp card draw removal and see how the deck is balanced that way first and then we'll get into the deck more specifically in just a moment but let's start with the (laughs) stats 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 All right, so this timey-wimey deck stats overall. So first up, ramp. We have about 13 pieces of ramp. Pretty good. Pretty good, especially considering the commander, like the the face commander has is five mana to cast and then seven mana to activate. Yeah. A lot of ramp is really important. All of these actually seem pretty mana hungry. 11th Doctor wants you to be able to activate Mm -hmm. abilities and Kate obviously has that. Wants you to get to eight. eight. So yeah, lots of ramp. Good. We like. Card draw, 14 holy cow pretty good that is also pretty good that's definitely what i want in a pre-con i I think generally when i play a lower power deck overall i want more card advantage so i can use the cards that are right in the right moment yeah because they will generally speaking be a little bit slower so having that card selection is good and also then you don't run out of options at all and just your deck falters and dies so lots of card draw pretty good yep uh targeted interaction 11 Good. Pretty good. That's about where I want it. It's a little higher than I tend to run, but yeah. Board wipes, five. Wow. That's pretty high. Five is high, uh, especially for a deck where that many, many of these, all of them, all of them require attacking with the exception of the ninth doctor, which you can crew or something like that. They really want a big board state. So five board wipes seems like a lot to me. Yeah. Now, granted, the deck feels like it wants to go a little bit longer. It wants to build up value by doing all these tricky time things. So Mm. board wipes are reasonable to have. But five, you're right, seems like a little bit much. Uh, And then 37 lands. Okay. Well, yep. That's that's the lands in the commander deck. <laughs> a normal amount of lands. Yeah. We love it. Uh, there are nine basic lands in this deck. Uh, that is relevant because it impacts reprints. Um, nine is quite low. 
Yes. For a uh, for a precon, normally if we have thirty seven lands, we're seeing much closer to eighteen. Yeah. Uh, in a three color deck. Yeah. So that means we're getting a ton of non basic lands in this deck. Yeah, I'm a little bit split about it because I really like that they're reprinting more of the non basic lands. That's just always good for consumers. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they have some lands that care about you having a basic land or having a basic land type. And in that case, you're probably not going to have a basic land or a basic land type if there's only nine in the deck. Nine is lower than I run in most of my decks. Yeah. Like if I'm running too. three colors, I probably run closer to like, I don't know, 12. Yeah. I, I run about 10 to 12. Yeah. As well. Uh, I know some people are like, yeah, if the blood moon hits, my game's just over. I'll run one yeah. <laughs> in case somebody paths to exiles <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I tend to run even more than nine, but that means that there is going to be a lot of land reprints, yep. which is pretty good. Uh, all right, let's talk about the contents of this box specifically. Um, the commanders are kind of pulling us all in slightly different directions. We got a lot of like time counters on permanence. We've got like some suspend options. We've got a lot of attacky stuff like Rose gets very big and 11th Do Doctor and Amy Pond want to deal damage here so let's break down what the deck is doing yeah so the deck clearly cares about time counters basically no matter what commander you're running uh so there's 22 things that have time counters on them or put time counters on right themselves so, so that includes suspend cards yep. that includes vanishing cards and that includes a couple of cards in this deck that are just have time counters yeah. put on them it's sort of like plus one plus one counters they're like charge counters or something yeah um, like Ro Rose Tyler uses time counters exactly. basically like plus one plus one counters, but they're but they're time counters exactly. for all purposes. Yeah. So twenty two is pretty low. Mm -hmm. um, generally, if we want a deck that's really really built around something, we want twenty five to thirty. Yeah. So twenty two feels sort of on the lower end. And then we split this up into more specific mechanics, just so we get a better idea of which doctor or which uh, legends go in the command zone. There are only six cards in this deck that naturally have suspend. Ooh. Um, that seems low. Yeah. So the there's like the face of bow, which is an alternate commander that you could put in this deck, but only cares about cards with suspend. Um, so obviously he's not going to work as a commander out of the box. Yeah, great. There's six cards in my <laughs> deck that I can guess for free. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that also means that like the 10th doctor's ability is going to be like the 10th doctor's ability, the 11th doctor's ability. These cards that put things on suspend that don't have suspend are really, really important yes. to get things suspended. Uh, the other one is there's only seven cards in the deck that have vanishing. Um, more vanishing cards than suspend cards, which sort of surprised me. Yeah, I thought that there would be more stuff that cares about suspend slash is like pu puts itself on suspend, right? If you haven't played with vanishing before, vanishing is permanents that have counters put on them and you remove a counter every upkeep. And then when you remove the last one, it's gone. Uh, it vanishes. Yeah. Believe it or not. Um, <laughs> Crazy. So you kind of need the timey-wimey ability. You want to be able to manipulate the number of counters on them so you can keep these cards around as long as possible. So your permanents just don't start disappearing on you. Um, but it does mean that the ninth doctor is a little suspicious because I really don't want vanishing cards with two upkeeps. Yeah, I, I think I agree that the ninth doctor we probably don't want in the command zone. Uh, you can do it, but it's probably going to take a little bit more than 10 cards in, 10 cards out in order to make that a viable strategy. Right. Cool build around. Maybe we'll see him with some different companions. Oh, yeah. I, this is, is for the ninth doctor. I wanted to count the number of upkeep triggers that are just naturally care about the upkeep. And there's only three. Yeah, so There's still definitely three. don't want Ninth Doctor yeah. out of the box. 16 if you're including the suspend and vanishing stuff, yeah. of course. And what about if you want like the 11th Doctor with Amy? You you probably want to have some other things other than mm -hmm. the activated ability to give unblockable. Uh, so we counted that up and it has seven things that can grant unblockable. A lot. Yeah, kind of a lot. It's interesting. Um, when I think of a suspend deck, I don't think of evasion as much. But when you look at Rose Tyler, who's huge and doesn't yep. have any natural evasion, or something like Amy and the 11th Doctor, who are small and don't have any natural evasion, you it's really important to have some way to do that. Yeah, and so. the 10th Doctor does care about attacking. Like, something has to attack, and presumably you don't want that thing to die. Right. So having evasion, that's, that's good. Yeah, we'll take it. So if, if you get rid of the suspend counters and the time counters, there's 16 remaining. There's 16 permanents with time counters for Kate, uh -huh. which seems a little bit low if yeah. I was running Kate Stewart in the 
out of the box. So which commander do we think is going to be the best fit overall? Yeah, so you could run the 11th Doctor with Amy. That's not totally unreasonable, but I feel like the deck skews a little bit more towards the 10th Doctor and mm-hmm. Rose Tyler. And that's not super surprising considering it is the face commander. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that guy. It's, like, it's he that is, guy. He's the guy. Yeah, when you think Doctor Who. You think David Tennant, probably. I think David Tennant a, and then a lot Matt people, Smith. A lot of people do think Matt Smith uh, yeah. or 11th Doctor, but... I don't know. Uh, for this upgrade guide, we're going to go with David Tennant. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we include will be based off of that. But if you want to run the 11th Doctor, you totally can. Totally reasonable. Yeah. Of course, that's the 10th Doctor with uh, Rose Tyler. Correct. Yes. Um, I think they just they just care about time counters in the most general sense. Yeah. Which I, is sort of what we I have I do to. think they're also a little bit more powerful. Like time yeah. traveling three times is very, very powerful. Very powerful. Expensive, but worth it. Yeah, um, definitely. If you can get, especially like Rose, if you can get a lot Rose of Rose can get big as well. There's unblockable stuff to get Rose through. So I feel like this combination has the most punching power. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh, okay, we talked about what the deck is in the deck mechanically. We want to talk about what's in the deck financially to make sure that you are getting what you want out of these products. I want to make sure that w- like when you spend your money on a precon, you know exactly what you're getting and you're happy with that. So we're going to talk about the reprint value of this deck overall. Uh, this number does not, it only takes into account the reprints at time of recording. And there's only 38 reprints in this deck. So we're talking about the 38 reprinted cards is included in this value, not the new cards, which there are 53. That's a lot. New cards. Yeah. It's kinda, it's, yeah. It's kind of like, like Warhammer. the Warhammer cards. Yeah. yeah. Lord of the Rings had a lot more reprints. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot more cards that naturally fit in the Lord of the Rings world. Yeah. Plus I mean, it's, like it's a, a fantasy set. world. So I feel like that yeah. just like slots in a little bit better anyway. So all of the values that we are including are only talking about 38 cards in this deck. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to talk about um, what the deck costs. Uh, we're talking about, we're talking about it at, at time of pre-release. So this is a, a ways in advance. Yeah. Um, and these numbers can change drastically as cards begin come spoiled but right now all of the doctor who decks are pre-ordering for about 50 dollars, which is great yeah um so uh, before we go any further let's talk about the reprint value for this deck okay it so, is 142 dollars and 65 cents wow that's high. so high yeah especially if you do get it for the whatever the pre-order yeah, price is about 50 bucks. 50 bucks yeah it's not bad that's actually it's really good <laughs> really it's really very good yeah. um and uh, that's a ton of value in only 38 cards so we're not yeah. even talking about half the deck adds value to this number yeah because there's so many new cards that are also being printed in this deck that are not being counted in this 142 dollar number right it's yeah. only those 38 cards so it's been really difficult to compare um pre-con reprint values recently yeah because they keep like doing all sorts of different things with the pre-cons yeah the the like starting price changes a lot it went from 40 to 70 to 80 to 30 it like they're all over the place so it's really hard to compare them directly so what i've been doing is taking the reprint value so this 142 dollars and i've been dividing it by the pre-order price so what we're seeing on the shelves before anything gets spoiled and right now it's about 50 dollars so i can compare those quotients which i'm calling the bang for your buck value it which is just like for every one dollar american i spend how much card value do i get back and it gives us a a little bit of a better comparison of of decks directly and doing this at pre-order prices as opposed to when the decks come out uh do two things one we literally can't do that because we uh, we, we don't know yet but also it is just very helpful to have a baseline of these retailers are expecting these to sell at about this price now there could be expensive cards in there that cause them to have that price go up but for what the MSRP quote unquote should be, even though there's technically no MSRP, a pre-order price is a much better uh, guesstimate as far as yeah. where that should be. And if you want to find out, like if there's a different price on the box, you can take this reprint value, 142 and 65 cents and divide it by whatever you're finding the box for. Yeah. And that'll give you an adjusted bang for your buck value. So uh, to compare it to the pre-cons of the past year, March of the Machine had a bang for your buck value of $2.42. Lord of the Rings had $2.53 of reprint value per $1 cash. Commander Masters had an abysmally low $1.90 of reprint value per $1 cash. And 
Wilds of Eldraine had a very high quotient, which was $2.82 of refund value for $1 cash. So we were super happy with Wilds of Eldraine. Those decks were very affordable and had great Quite reprints good. in them. Yeah. Um, and this bang for your buck value for the Timey Wimey deck specifically is $2.85. And that is if you get this deck at $50. So that's the highest of all the ones that you just listed. That beats all, all of them. We were very happy with the value in Lord of the Rings at $2.53 and with Wilds of Eldraine with $2.82. Yeah. So this is this is great value if we're just talking straight reprints. And this isn't even a necessarily a fair number for this deck mm -hmm. because it has so many fewer reprints than these other decks we're talking about. Yeah. So what I wanted to do to compare this is I wanted to find out just what the average reprint individual value was. So like what each card was worth on average. Mm -hmm. So that tells you just what the quality of the reprints are overall. I like how mathy this is getting. I know I did some <laughs> math. I just wanted this to be like valuable and it felt like just giving the base number yeah. wasn't doing anything yeah, anymore. Yeah, the base number, like it, it used to be helpful. It but used to be helpful isn't. and then now things change all the time. Yeah. So what we like in a reprint is expensive reprints, yes. right? We liked big cards getting reprinted so they come down. So they are cheaper and so they can get to the hands of commander players. <laughs> yes. So, uh, the average individual reprint value in March of the Machines was $1.38. So if you pulled a random non-basic land out of that box, it was $1.38. Mm -hmm. In Lord of the Rings, it was $2.38. Oh, that's better. Better. In Commander Masters, it was $2.05. So the reprints there were good. Were good. It, the it boxes just, were just too expensive. They were much too expensive. Wilds of Eldraine was at a dollar and ninety cents, so close. Yeah, uh, but those were also less expensive, right? Uh, but the, yeah, those were much, much less expensive boxes. And the Timey Wimey average individual reprint value, if it pulled a random reprint out of this box, is three dollars and seventy five cents. Oh, yeah, my goodness, just a random reprint. So out of those thirty eight cards, if you're just like mm, this one, it's a real card like it's yeah. a real card that we needed reprinted on average and that really shows up when we talk about the notable reprints in this deck uh there are nine cards that are worth five dollars or more in this box that's great that's that's higher than we usually get and they are largely lands which is awesome Thank you. Reprint lands. Make lands cheap. Let people play Magic the Gathering, please. Like reprinting <laughs> all the shiny Thank cards you. is great, but we need lands to be affordable to build yeah. new decks. Otherwise, you just can't build them. So I have definitely started building decks and been like, oh, well, the mana base in and of itself is going to be $100, $200 right. if I want it to be decent. Right. So I'm not going to build that deck. No, 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 no. Make lands cheap so people can play decks. Yes. So we can pay buy the cool reprinted cards, right? Exactly. So let's run through these really quick. It's Sunbaked Canyon. This is the red, white, uh, sack it to draw card. Land is at $21. Wedding Ring is at $20 Wedding and caught 20? a reprint Ooh. here. I know. Storm, Car Storm Carved Coast. These are the slow lands i love these are 16 dollars mm -hmm. farewell got a reprint at 12 dollars and the art oh, is heartbreaking the art is heartbreaking the flavor text of i don't want to go if oh. you just uh, if you just want to weep while just playing magic you can play every time this farewell gut. fiery eyelet is 10 dollars this is um a, what are these called they're the Horizon Lands? Horizon Lands. Yeah. That's it. Horizon, Horizon Canopy, Canopy was the first was one. The only one. And yeah. then they reprinted them in Modern Horizons because right. they're clever. Hey. <laughs> Fiery Islet uh, is the blue red Horizon Land. Sundown Pass is the red white slow land. Deserted Beach is the blue white slow land at $8.50. Yeah, those are getting up there. They got expensive fast because they're just untapped duels yep. most of the time in Commander. People want those. Fractured Identity is $8.50. It's one of my favorite cards to cast in so Commander. Fun. Really glad, glad to see it reprinted. And Lightning Greaves remains over $5 at $7.50. Print this card into the ground. Love me some Lightning they're Greaves. They're trying. <laughs> they're, they're doing their best. It's like doing this one wizards. in Skull Clamp is just like, we refuse to go. We see you. We see you. Thank we, you for all of your hard work. <laughs> great reprints. Huge um, really made this deck feel like you're getting cards that you're just gonna like the, it also made the mana base feel yeah. really playable in these decks. Yes. Excellent job. Um, a lot more untapped lands in general. Okay. So financially pretty good. Happy nice. with these. Yeah. Especially at 50 bucks. That's great. Uh, we've talked about like the most expensive cards in the deck and often those are the best cards in the deck, mm -hmm. but 
we want to talk about the best cards in terms of like when you draw them, you're like, oh, the deck is working. Yeah. Like a huge engine pieces because uh, it gives you a good idea for what the deck do. Yeah. So let's talk about them. So this one is just, I, I think, a little bit more on the generically good side. Mm. Uh, it's Flesh Duplicate. It's a blue-blue shapeshifter. Rebel, uh, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it has Vanishing 3 if that creature doesn't have Vanishing. So it's a two-mana clone. We all know how powerful, like, Phantasmal Image type stuff yeah. is. And, and it's any creature on the battlefield. Any creature on the battlefield. It could be yours. could be somebody else's. One thing that I think is really cute about this is that the episode that this is from, it's from a... It's from a Matt Smith episode. Mm -hmm. The title is called Rebel Flesh. And the type is Shapeshifter Rebel. Rebel. So that's cute. Gavin. Whoever did that, probably Gavin. (laughs) Once again, we see you. Um, this so, next one's sweet and is very interesting yeah. in this deck. Yeah. This Especially one's, with, with the 10th Doctor. Yeah. And this one's just a very interesting and cool card. One of my favorite cards from this deck. Uh, it's Nanogene Conversion. Three and a blue sorcery. Choose target creature you control. Each other creature becomes a copy of that creature until end of turn, except it isn't legendary. So this is from the moments of the Empty Child mm. episode from the Ninth Doctor, where they put on gas masks. And by put on gas masks, I mean that there's a child that goes around and touches people yeah. and if the child touches you then your mass your your face like gets a gas mask like welded to your face and you become basically a zombie and Ooh. go around saying are you my mommy that's fun yeah it's a frightening episode one yeah. of the best of the early seasons of the reboot of the show i was gonna say this art is haunting it's haunting yeah it's, it's a haunting episode mm. too uh, but also one of the best Uh, But functionally, this card is really, really interesting because you can say it's like Mirror Weave kind of. Right. This is now... Except for it cares about legendaries. Correct. Or it works for legendaries. And it's only choose target creature you control as opposed to Mirror Weave, which can be anything on the battlefield. So you can say, well, the 10th Doctor, which has its cool attack ability. Now, every single one of my creatures also has that attack ability. And then I attack. And that's great because now everything's a 3-5. So all of your attackers will be just fine, presumably. Uh, You could could have some double blocks in there, but it's a pretty safe attack. Uh, You can get tons of value from it. And it's just really exciting to see a card like this where there's just so many different cool opportunities where you can try to find the uses for it. I love it in this deck. I mean, the the timey-wimey ability is seven mana, so you really want it to be so powerful. Mm -hmm. And when you can get a ton of cards on suspend all at the same time, suspend is really where it's most powerful. Yeah. It means that you're paying seven mana and getting like... Like 10, 12 mana worth of things off of suspend. So love nanogene conversion. And it's the reason that this next card is on the list as well. The parting of the ways is for red, red for a saga. The first chapter says exile the top five cards of your library for each non land card exile this way, put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Ooh. So it, you look at the top five, all of the lands don't count. So you can get up to five things exiled. Just suspend everything that's not a land. But it just throws a ton of things in onto exile. So it makes that timey a wimey ability really powerful. And then the next chapter says time travel, then time travel. So all of the stuff that you've just suspended, now you can immediately take two time counters off of it or, you know, put counters onto your flesh duplicates. So yeah. Presumably you have longer. other things that, that are happening on yeah. the board. So it helps with that. And then it says the third chapter is for each opponent, destroy up to one target artifact that player controls. So little extra value tacked on the end, a little bit slow, but you can pick off some mana rocks. Cool. Yeah. Uh, All right. We have talked about what is in this box and up next, we are going to do this upgrade. We're going to add 10 cards. We're going to take 10 cards out just so it is in its best form for you to take it to game night. But first, we have a few words from our sponsors. Man, I love this time of year. Me too. It's spooky season. The perfect time to brew up that zombie or spirit deck. Yeah, Halloween is great. But fall is also the season of value because our longtime sponsor, Raycon, they're having their big anniversary sale. To thank everyone who's shown them support in the past six years, Raycon is offering 20% off every on their site with select products up to 40% off. We both use Raycons all the time, especially their everyday earbuds. They have that perfect in-ear fit and 32-hour battery life that make them great for listening all 
day long, whether I'm flying to a con or just chilling at home. And there's just no other brand that offers the same premium audio quality at Raycon's reasonable prices. Plus, this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. So whether you need earbuds, speakers, or even an air purifier, don't miss out on the anniversary sale value. These deals are so good, it's scary. <laughs> Get it? You yeah. guys? No, yep, I got it. We all got it. Celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on now. Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash command and use code birthday to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. That's code birthday at buyraycon.com slash command to score 20 to 40% off. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. The Command Zone has grown a lot over the years. We started as a two-person podcast, but now we're a full-grown business. Still, we want to focus on magic, not get bogged down by e-commerce. And that's why we found the perfect business partner. Shopify. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. And whatever stage yours is at, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business. For a long time, we didn't have much merch ourselves because it's hard to manage the logistics. But Shopify helped us expand what we could offer to our fans by a lot. And they even made it easier to connect with and reward our patrons for supporting us all these years. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel, whether it's in-person point of sale or online with e-commerce. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify is the internet's best converting channel checkout to help you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs of all sizes across the world, and their award-winning help is there to support success every step of the way. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tcz, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash tcz to take your business to the next level today. Again, shopify.com slash tcz. I think it might need more card draw. Who are you talking to? Or is that just something you say? Oh, no, I'm on a call with Jimmy. We're uh, building a Chatterfang deck. Ooh, I just added Toski. That should help, right? Whoa, the card just showed up. Yeah, with Architect, you can collaborate in real time from anywhere in the world. Changes show up immediately. You don't even have to reload the page. So it's perfect for brewing with a friend. This is cool, but isn't Jimmy just upstairs? Yeah, but I'm I'm downstairs right now. I ain't coming downstairs. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. Welcome back, everybody. We are upgrading the timey-wimey Doctor Who pre-con cares all about time counters. Uh, and we are going to upgrade this deck to make sure it is as powerful as possible on a budget. We're going to spend $50... Uh, and at in on 10 cards to go into this deck to really make sure that the synergies are really toned and the deck is working as well as possible for you. But before we get into the specific cards, I want to talk about what we were intending to do with this upgrade. Yeah, so we both played with this deck a little bit out of the box, yeah. right? And the deck is a little bit scattered. Yeah, like the commanders that we talked about seem like they all care about time counters and stuff like that, but there just happens to be a lot of like legendary creatures or artifacts or just cool things that represent moments in the show that are cool in a vacuum, but don't really work together with the any of the doctors for that matter. Like Matt yeah. Smith, uh, the 11th doctor kind of synergizes with the 10th doctor, but there's a lot of cards that will not have that kind of synergy or overlap. Yeah, there's a lot of attention and love paid to individual cards yes. in this in this deck where it's like if you're a Doctor Who fan, you get to look at a saga and it's based on the TV show you watched. Yep. And that's really, really cool design. But sometimes it's like, make a tutu. Now the tutu's unblockable. Now the tutu blows up and you get four <laughs> one ones. And you're like, what? <laughs> Why? This, like, is, this is not. This helpful. has nothing to do with the deck. Uh, so, yeah, taking some of those cards that um, can have other homes and are individually really neat, but aren't. Uh, aren't necessarily yeah. have anything to do with uh, with the deck itself. Yeah, and well, I guess before we go in... And adding to, what? Yeah, what we're to trying to put in. what we're adding, uh, the, you can try to just keep it pretty stock, maybe put in some other Doctor Who cards, but what we're doing is we are going to go off theme and off flavor. Yeah. Some people not might not want to do that, so if that's the case, well, then the, this list probably isn't for you but if you want to try to tune it up a little bit and try to get your deck closer to a point where it works better functionally more so you care about that than the flavor mm -hmm. well then that's what we're gonna do want to make sure your deck function works. over flavor out yeah. of the box it is flavor over function we're going to flip the script on that yeah and whatever way you want to play that's great awesome uh cool so 
what are we trying to do with this? Well, the deck, uh, we talked about this a little bit, but the deck wants... Well, yes, it's a lot of mana that you need. So I think we want more mana. It seems to have a lot of good mana accelerants, Mm. uh, but I think we want to add more, like, bursts of mana, right? Yeah, I mean, your commander is five, like, the the 10th Doctor is five mana to get on the battlefield, seven mana to activate, so it's 12 mana in order to do that timey-wimey ability, which is the most powerful thing about him. So, yeah, huge bursts of mana to give you that that big explosive turn that suspend decks really want to have. Uh Uh-huh. I think we also want to add some suspend cards slash more cards that care about suspend Mm -hmm. uh, to try to like go on that path a little bit more. Um, And then just little bits of tune up here and there. I think payoffs as well. This deck kind of needs. Yeah, it it really leans on Rose to close yeah. the game out because uh, a lot of the things that you put on suspend are just like our mana rocks or like a yeah. couple cards or here and there. Value pieces. Not necessarily ways that are going to end a commander game. Yeah, the deck um, tends to dirtle a lot and just yeah. like kind of spin its wheels and doesn't have a ton of like punching power and finishing the game offness yeah uh, so we're hopefully going to add a little bit of that as well yeah all right so all right. let's start with this first section in mana mana so back to the mana um the first pick that i wanted to add was soul talisman it is soul ring uh but you suspend it for one mana and it has suspend three so it is another soul ring having two soul rings in your deck is good and it also has more suspense synergies honestly it, you th- this card i've played around a little bit with in commander mm-hmm. but the problem is it feels really bad when you draw it late yeah but ideally the way that the deck works is that you'll have some sort of like synergy some sort of way to be taking those time counters off if you draw it late you'll have like a board set up to be able to hopefully do that so it feels a lot less bad drawing it late right and if you draw it early then that's another slowing it's another mana accelerant uh that you can pour into the timey wimey ability help cast your commander basically whatever you need it to do yeah, I agree. This, this deck really cares about colorless mana as yes. well, because a lot of the abilities are colorless to activate. Timey Wimey is colorless to activate. Your commander is five mana. Yeah, and the so, mana base is good enough that you don't really feel super choked on mana. Sure. A lot of the lands will enter tapped, uh, so that can be a little bit of a downside, but you will, generally speaking, have the colors that you need. Yeah. So having colorless accelerants is totally fine. Yep. Uh, this next one is a big one uh, for the deck. I think this deck is crying out for a mana geyser. Uh, three red red for a sorcery it says add red for each tapped land your opponents control yeah this is a pretty common commander staple uh, but I think that it really shines here because again you want to activate the timey wimey ability and if you have a mana geyser late you can very often just activate the timey wimey ability twice maybe even three times and that can be huge for your game plan yeah um this next one is a is it's similar it's so good in this deck yeah though. so it's a rousing refrain that's a three red reds uh, add a red for each card in target opponent's hand um and until end of turn you may use that mana blah 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 and then you can put rousing refrain on suspend and it has suspend three which is very important because what happens with the 10th doctor with its timey wimey abil- timey wimey ability it's uh time travels three times so it basically pays for itself if somebody has seven cards in hand for you to be able to timey wimey yep and it can also go net positive if for some reason somebody has eight cards in hand yep you can just get infinite mana with this and the 10th doctor on the battlefield it's pretty wild it's Uh, crazy that's probably why they didn't include it in the deck if i had to guess i would think so they included the blue refrain that draws two cards and then puts itself back on and that card's great in the deck it's just it's just a, a something that you always have time counters and it's a little engine that just keeps chugging and rousing refrain does exactly the same thing but is even more powerful so i uh, huge ad and really really cool yep. uh love it uh this card's a slam dunk in the deck. She is an old menace of commander. It's Joyra of the Gitu. Yeah, so she's one blue and a red. You can pay two to exile a non-line card from your hands and put four time counters on it and it gains suspend. Uh, so we are adding some suspend uh, cards to this list to hopefully up that amount of suspending that you can do. But Joyra pulls a lot of weight because you will still have cards that do not have suspend in the deck. There's only so much you can do with 10 cards in, 10 cards out. Um, so it, it'll help just like get those cards onto suspense so then you can do all of your fun time traveling stuff the timey wimey wibbly wobbly stuff yeah to it 
it, she gives you a, the big explosive yeah. turn and your commander gives you control over time. Exactly. Uh, this next one is one of my favorite cards in my... Oh, and it, we haven't been saying prices, uh, oh. but Joyra is only 50 cents. Yeah, these have all been... Uh, pretty, pretty cheap. Pretty cheap. Yeah, what was the other stuff? Soul Talisman, 75 cents. Mana Geyser is buck seventy five, and Rosin Refrain is 75 cents. Yeah, I would, that, maybe that's why we just haven't hit yeah, any shouldn't of the break big whammies yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have a fifty dollars limit, but so far we're coming in quite underneath that. You're doing, you're doing well. <laughs> Presumably, these will go up a little bit once more people get their hands on this. Yeah, and probably the will start uh, messing with the deck a little bit more. So hopefully, this should still be under that fifty dollars, even post prices potentially going up. This one's cool. It's one of my favorite cards in my Treasure Horn deck. It's Sinister Concierge. This She's so an cool. angry hotel clerk. Uh, one in a blue for a human wizard. It is a 2-1. It says, whenever Sinister Concierge dies, you may exile it and put three time counters on it. If you do, exile up to one target creature and put three time counters on it. Each card exiled this way that doesn't have suspend gains suspend. So, first of all, I love that... Yeah. For, to me, she looks very Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor Who always has, like, some bizarre villain. Yes. That's it, like, <laughs> this totally could fit within the theme of Doctor Who There's because... some Lost Hotel episode. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it's also just... An, a 2-1 is a great little attacker. If it dies, then you get to exile something so you can make deals with your opponents to be like, hey, block... Like, if you block this 2-1, I'll exile that and I'll send mine back on suspend, which you have control over time. So she's coming back sooner than the other. Yeah. And it's even good as an attacker. Yeah. Right? Because the 10th Doctor cares about attacking. So having the Sinister Concierge Especially just... a two drop. Yeah. Come out early and then just start attacking. You can get rid of basically any of the big stuff that is a problem for you, put it on suspend, and then time travel or use some of your other cards to affect those time counters. And then your opponent, whatever you exiled, they have to wait the full three turns unless they're also playing <laughs> a deck that's doing time <laughs> counters. But if you're playing in a pod that has all the Doctor Who decks nobody else really cares about that nope. uh so presumably they'll just have to wait the full three turns it's super sweet uh something we haven't noticed uh excuse me something we haven't said is uh creatures that come off of suspend gain haste yes so this is actually a much tighter clock than it looks like mm -hmm. when it ha when it is on suspend over and over again if you can speed it up even just by one counter a turn you can attack with this what is it every other turn yeah it goes on suspend yeah it, even if you're removing one counter a turn you can attack with this every other turn and keep exiling stuff uh if or just getting a free attacker yeah honestly i i posted this on twitter a while ago but i keep seeing like cards from new capenna commander and being like those decks are sweet that card exists that yeah. card's so cool like every time i find a cool new card i'm like it's from new, Com new capenna commander is that the, there's all like the sweet <laughs> counter cards is it that it's really cool yeah deck. i love it love it so much uh, this next one is, uh, the majority of the bank here, but yep. it, worth it, I yeah. think. So, Scroll Rack. It's the two mana artifact. You can pay one tap, exile any number of cards from your hand face down, put that many cards from the top of your library into your hand, then put the exiled cards back on top of your library in any order. So this will help stack the Tenth Doctor's trigger. So you can actually put things that you care about on top of the deck. Because one thing that you will run into is you'll exile a mana rock. And then you're like, great, I spent all of my time and resources into getting the 10th Doctor's ability to work, and all I got for it was a mana rock. Yeah. So ideally, then you can put stuff that matters a little bit more than a mana rock on top of your deck. Uh, and it's also pretty good in a pre-con environments where card, the, the deck has plenty of card draw, so your hand will be full but it might not be full of stuff that you care about. And Scroll Rack can increase the amount of cards that you can see there. Yeah, I, I really like Scroll Rack in this deck. I had that issue on Game Nights where I was like, I have all of the expensive stuff in my hand yep. and I keep suspending cheap cards that I would rather cast. Yeah. Um, it gives you more control over when things go on suspend too, because there's some things that like, if I could cast that right now, it would be great. But it, now I have to timey-wimey, otherwise I can't cast it. So it just putting things in the order that you want them in is a really big deal and well worth the $19. Definitely. Just gives you a lot more control. Yeah. Um, and then the next one we added was a Wheel of Fate. It's a one in a red and suspend four. It is Wheel of Fortune. Everyone discards their hand and draws seven cards. And 
the deck has a decent amount of card draw. It has 14 pieces of draw. So I went a little bit back and forth on whether or not to include this, but I think that it's just so incredibly powerful given that you can control the time counters. Mm -hmm. Usually what happens with Wheel of Fate is that you put on suspend and then people dump their hand and prepare for it. But because you can add or remove time counters when you time travel, uh, people will just be guessing and not know when it's going to come out. Uh, so it's basically like a Wheel of Fortune that only costs two mana. That's always threatening. It's closer it's to like a Magus of the Meal. <laughs> Magus, Magus of, of the, the Meal wheel, is yeah. my favorite Magus. But again, Magus only of two the mana in order to do that. <laughs> right, exactly. And it'll give you like a fresh hand of seven, uh, keep your engines running mm. nice and smooth. So I think it's a really good include. Yeah. Uh, this next one is a big top end card for this deck. It is Sphinx of the Second Sun. Yeah, it's six blue blue uh, flying at the beginning of your post combat main phase. You get an additional beginning phase after this phase. Keep in mind, it says after this phase. So that's that beginning phase happens before your end step. Right? Yeah, it yes. says it triggers at the beginning of your post-combat main phase. But then you get it. But it after happens the after. Main phase. Very confusing, yes. but that's how you do it. Uh, but the important things about this is that you get another upkeep uh, and another draw and another untap uh, for all of your potential big mana spells because the deck is a little bit clunky. Uh, there's a lot of. Not a lot of instants, but whatever instance it does have, oftentimes will cost three or four mana. And so if you want to try to hold up mana, it becomes a little bit weird to do that and for your game plan. Mm -hmm. So this card is able to do that. But giving an additional upkeep makes it so that you can remove more time counters. Go faster. Go faster. And we talked about it a little bit earlier as well, but that's kind of a double-edged sword with the vanishing counters. Uh, but I think that's the deck, and especially the way that we're pushing it, cares a lot more about the suspended cards. I agree. And you have enough control that I think you can, you will be able to keep enough counters on those vanishing cards that it kind of outweighs the potential downside. This deck wants uh, to attack with its creatures. It wants to be aggressive on the battlefield so you can trigger your commander as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't create a ton of creatures. Like, it doesn't really create a big yeah. board state. So I was struggling with, like, if I attack with my creatures, I will be hit by many other creatures. Yeah. So I really like this next set include. Yeah. Chronomantic Escape. Four white, white sorcery. Until your next turn, creatures can't attack you. Remove Chronomantic Escape from the game with three time counters on it, and it has Suspend three for two and a white. All right, Suspend three. That's what we're looking for. The magic number. We love that magic number. And it goes back on Suspend, huh? Yeah. So this card is nuts if you're able to control the time counters on it because it's until your next turn, creatures can attack you. So even if somebody plays a creature with haste, they still can't attack you. Nope. As long as the spell has resolved. And this deck dirtles. This deck can take a while to get going. So what you do not want to do is you do not want to just die to a few big attackers early. And like you said, you want to be able to at least attack with one thing to be able to do the 10th Doctor's ability, right? Yeah. So Chronomantic Escape just does everything you want, keeps you safe, keeps it so that you don't die. Combat is one of the most common ways to win in Commander. Especially in a pre-con environment. Especially in a pre-con environment. Yeah. And if you are able to draw this card and get an engine set up where you can cast this every single turn, there's like basically no way you can lose. Yeah, it's really... <laughs> it's really good. It's really, really impressive. Uh, and I love this next include. Didn't think of it at all, but it's we needed a big payoff for yeah. like you're casting all these stuff off suspend, but all the stuff you're casting is kind of drawing spells or it's mana rock or it's developing your board a little bit. How do we use that that explosion of like spells? Yeah, so I, to I, win, we we just needed to add another finisher. Yeah, uh, Ovika Enigma Goliath. Uh, it's a five blue red six six flyer. It's got ward three and pay three life. Absolutely crazy. Uh, but whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create X11 one, one red Phyrexian goblin creature tokens where X is the mana value of that spell. They gain haste until end of turn. Haste. Haste, so good. Uh, and if this comes off of suspend, it'll also have haste because why the heck not? Uh, but this card is quite good because you will oftentimes be putting a lot of cards on suspend. And a lot of the cards that you are suspending are non-creature spells. There's mm -hmm. a few creatures, but mostly non-creatures. Uh, the deck skews a little bit more heavily towards non-creatures than to creatures. Um, so being able to have this come off of suspend or have this already be on the battlefield while a bunch of other stuff comes off of suspend uh, is pretty crazy because then you can just get a giant board. Everything has haste and you can just like start attacking people and hopefully start to close the game out.
Yeah, I love the Ovika include only 50 cents for this Enigma Goliath. Oh, yeah, we uh, stopped uh, doing the prices again. Uh, they, Wheel of Fate, we went, $3. Yeah. Sphinx is the sun, second son, three fifty. dollars Chronomantic Escape, 50 cents. Yeah. All so. of these are very low in the budget, which means our grand total is only $30.75. And most of a that is A thrifty upgrade. <laughs> yeah, $20, $20 of that is scroll rack. Although... It's if you want to spend money on one card, that's the card yep, for this deck. Definitely. Um, love this upgrade. Well under budget. And all of the cards feel like they really do add something to that the deck is missing. Uh, next thing we have to do is take out some beloved magic cards. Uh, with these precons, it was actually fairly straightforward um, yeah. because there are so many cards that are decidedly off the plan yeah take out the characters and moments uh that do not uh have anything to do with the plan uh so this first one actually does have something to do with the plan it's just very slow it's very slow uh wilfred mott it's a uh, three and a whites uh, at the beginning of your upkeep put a time counter on wilfred then look at the top x cards of your library where x is the number of time counters on wilfred you may put a non-land permanent card with mana value three or less from among them onto the battlefield uh so first of all there just aren't that many three three or less non-land permanent yeah you're mostly just getting mana rocks nothing that's cool or that special uh but yeah it just takes time it triggers on upkeep even if you're manipulating time counters uh, i don't know four mana for this and then you gotta wait for it to do its thing there's there's just better options for card draw uh slash uh, like advantage yeah um so sorry wilfred but you gotta go uh, the next one is the Day of the Doctor. Three red, white for a saga. The first, second, and third chapter are all exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary card. You may play that card for as long as Day of the Doctor remains on the battlefield. Put the rest of the exiled cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. So it's a little bit of card draw, but very expensive. Mm -hmm. The fourth chapter is choose up to three doctors. You may exile all other creatures. If you do, the Day of the Doctor deals 13 damage to you. So you pick the doctors you have, you destroy everything else, and then it shoots you for 13. So this one was one of the board wipes, and we decided, you know what? We really don't need this. <laughs> a board wipe in four turns is a board, not a board wipe. A board wipe in four turns, yeah. and it's sure, you get to keep your doctor, but also deals 13 damage to you. You it's don't get great. to keep Rose. It's, um, yeah, yeah I, I think it's too slow. I think we have better card draw engines, especially for five mana. Yeah, great episode, though. Yeah. Uh, this next one is Idris, Soul of the TARDIS. I hate this card. Uh, it's one. I, I have no idea what you're supposed to do with it. I really don't know. It's one, a blue, and a red for a human ar incarnation with Vanishing 3. She's a 3-3. Three, three. When Idris enters the battlefield, exile another artifact you control until Idris leaves the battlefield. Idris has all activated and triggered abilities of the exiled card and gets plus X plus X where X is the exiled card's mana value. Feels kind of Marisol the Pretender, right? Yeah. I've but co why? Copy activated. But abilities. you only get one. Yeah. And it just gives an artifact you have summoning sickness. Yeah. Like you already yeah, have the artifact bad. with those activated abilities. Why yeah. do you want a creature? You get rid of the artifact and now you have a creature that has those activated abilities? Yeah. I mean, maybe there's things. Probably goes infinite with intruder alarm stuff, but like. Yeah. For it being a creature, would that matter for something? Potentially. You know what? Somebody out there, build let this us, deck. Let us know. I There's got to be some way to break it and or make it good and not terrible. But <laughs> as I, of now. But it's not in this deck. Uh, yeah, and getting rid of some of the vanishing cards is good. Yeah. Definitely what we want. Uh, next up, Martha Jones. Another companion. Two and a blue. Uh, when Martha Jones enters the battlefield, investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, Martha Jones and up to one other target creature can't be blocked. And it's a doctor's companion. So a nice little card, but not on theme. It makes clues and has the little unblockable thing. So it makes clue. Yeah, uh, it makes clue. Correct. <laughs> yeah, it, this deck doesn't make enough clues to really get a yeah. value out of this. It's a three mana three two that makes a single clue um, and yeah. makes one thing unblockable once. Doesn't do what we want. Not quite enough. Um, the eleventh hour is three and a blue for a saga. Search your library for a doctor card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle. Chapter two is create a food token and a one one white human creature token with doctor spells you cast cost one less to cast. Chapter three create a token that's a copy of target creature except it's a legendary alien named Prisoner Zero. Prisoner Zero. I've seen this episode. You've seen this episode? I've Great. seen this episode. <laughs> so I, I know that reference. It's uh, first of Matt Smith. <laughs> um, the other doctors you don't really care about yeah. a whole lot in this deck. You're only running... 
three of them total and they don't necessarily work super, super well. So yeah. you just don't need this kind of tutor. Yeah. Nice to have, but four mana for a slow card. Eh, let's get out of here. Uh, Jenny generated Anomaly, uh, the Doctor's Daughter. Uh, it's a double strike 2-3. When it deals combat damage to a player, it explores. Cool. Has nothing to do with what we're doing. See yeah. ya. <laughs> she, she attacks. All right. I guess it's a 2-2 two, two with double strike. This That's, next one is also very bizarre. On this, the this is the one that I actually <laughs> legit really felt bad about cutting because I'm like, oh, I like this card a lot, though. Adipo's Offspring. It's a three and a whites, and it's got a merge for five and a whites. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, make a 2-2 two, two white alien creature token. Uh, but if it uh, the emerge cost was paid, instead create X of those tokens where X is a sacrifice creature's toughness. So you know what these things are? I, they're, they're teeth. Body fat. Gross. Yeah, they're <laughs> disgusting, but they're adorable. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you're never not casting for this this for the emerge cost, and we really don't have a lot of stuff to sacrifice. Yeah, this is so. not what you want to be spending your mana on. Certainly not. not <laughs> Definitely yeah. not. Uh, Sally Sparrow, I've seen this episode too, and... Uh, <laughs> It doesn't work super well in the deck. It's too white blue for a human detective. You may cast creature spells as though they had flash. Whenever one or more other creatures you control leave the battlefield, investigate. This ability triggers only once each turn. Oh, that's cute. I, I just got that. Like, she's investigating the angels. And then when one of them goes away, she's like, oh, another clue. A clue. To figuring out what happened. It's that's cool. Super neat. Love this episode that. is awesome. I like this character a lot. Yep. It's not she doing never comes back. Yeah, I hate to tell you. Sorry. I, know. <laughs> I just like that actress. Yep. Uh, yeah. She's, we're, we're, we're not doing that. Yep. Sorry. Uh, we are also cutting uh, Donna Noble. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Don Don <laughs> Donna Noble <laughs> I, has left I the know, library. <laughs> I, I know Donna too. It's very sad to cut her from this deck. <laughs> Donna Noble has been cut from the deck. Donna Noble has been saved. Uh, all right. So she's three in a red. Uh, she can soul bond. Uh, and whenever Donna or a creature it's paired with is dealt damage, uh, Donna deals that much damage to target opponent. Cool. Once again, don't care. <laughs> no, 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 we're not really doing that. Nope. And finally, we're not doing that is Estrid Peth. One and a white for a human. When she enters the battlefield or attacks, create a food. Neat. Whenever you sacrifice a clue or food, Astrid Peth explores. Nice. Okay. Yep. So again, these are all really cool cards that definitely have homes somewhere. Yeah. So I think if you buy this deck that you can take a lot of the cards out and do things with them. And a, a lot of the decks work together. Yeah. So it's like you could take Astrid and you could put her in the historic deck. Yes. You could take like Sally and probably put her in the historic deck. There are a lot of like clue and food things. There just aren't a high concentration of them in this deck. So I genuinely, I think they sorted a lot of the cards chronologically and thematically mm -hmm. so that when you pick up a deck it really feels like one era of doctor who yeah but then when we when you talk about it mechanically the things are very disparate where yeah. it's like a lot of the decks mechanically have a little bit of food and a little bit of this a little bit of sagas a little bit of legendary so i think the whole thing needs to kind of just be rotated yeah a they, little bit. they definitely prioritized cool individual card designs over cohesiveness of the deck which is awesome but frustrating. Um, I <laughs> yeah, will it's, say it's both good and bad. It right? is really cool, and they make a really cool like art piece, and they're very frustrating to yeah. play. Uh, but how? But post upgrade, yeah. Like taking these ten cards out, a lot of them that are just sort of like cool, not what we're doing, and adding ten cards that synergize with your your commander, who is very powerful. Mm -hmm. How does this deck play now? Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to get out a creature early. So that when the 10th Doctor comes out, you will be able to attack that same turn. Mm -hmm. So usually it's Rose Tyler. Uh, other than that, you just want to basically ramp as fast as possible. Slash, put some things on suspend. Use your mana as efficiently as possible. Uh, so once you get to that 10th Doctor, you can start suspending some things. And then ideally, untap. And then you'll have enough ramp. You'll have enough mana to be able to time travel that turn. Mm. Maybe not. Sometimes you'll have to wait another turn after that because you'll go five to six to seven. Uh, but that's really what you want to be doing. Yeah. Lots of ramp, lots of suspend cards, and a single small creature. Very difficult to um, both cast your commander and timey-wimey. We've added some yeah. big bursts of mana that will hopefully help that. Um, 
Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it usually will take two turns yeah. for you to cast your commander and then timey wimey the turn after that. Because if your commander dies, 10th Doctor dies, ooh, seven mana to recast and another seven. That's yeah. 14 mana. Having some I kind of protection math. for him is really, really quite important. Yep. Um, okay, to the listeners, what do you think of the timey wimey precon? We know this doctor is super beloved. Did he meet your expectations? Uh, did Matt Smith meet your expectations? Those are those are the doctors. They're in this deck. Yeah. Uh, and Chris Brackleston. And don't forget Christopher Eccleston. Also in this deck. And beloved. I watched the mannequin episode. And it was great. It, yeah. <laughs> I feel like There's you a don't. A bunch of guys in rubber suits. <laughs> so what? Mickey There's... gets eaten by a trash can. That's true. That's with true. With terrible CGI. He gets really, yeah, the, the, the CGI in it is it's hilarious. It's pretty also, bad. Also his makeup's really wild. Yeah. It's... Post alienation. He's... Yeah. Very it's so plastic. hasty. Editors I, will put a put the creepy screenshot. Yeah, the, it's the from show. the first episode of the reboot series. It's really <laughs> sweet. Um, Doctor Who's a ton of fun. These decks are a ton of fun. They include a lot of like really funny moments. And yeah. if you are a Doctor Who fan, you're gonna look at a lot of, at a lot of the cards and be like, "Of course he makes food tokens. Ah, that's sweet." Because uh, there was a lot of love shown. Yeah, I um, think even if you are not a fan of magic, you can look at this and appreciate what each of the cards do. In individually as a doctor who fan yeah for sure um any cards we missed in the upgrade that you're like why didn't you add this you have to add this any cards we suggested to take out that you disagree with answer is because we only have 10 cards that that's why sorry yeah <laughs> it's probably a good idea but we only have 10 <laughs> cards <laughs> we talked about a lot of magic cards today if you heard any that you want to pick up please do so and support the show over at cardkingdom.com slash command we trust card kingdom with all of our card buying behaviors here at, at the command zone anytime we pick up cards for game nights live or for game nights uh we're getting them from card kingdom uh because we can order them all in one place and we know that they are going to show up on time and safe in one package and we're not worried and stressed about losing you know five to ten envelopes in the mail along the way so shop with card kingdom support the show again card kingdom.com slash command and also if you need any sort of gaming accessories to go along with your excellent Magic the Gathering product, go to ultrapro.com slash command. They have sleeves, they have play mats, they have dice, deck boxes, basically whatever you need to make your battlefield look awesome. It'll protect your cards, make everything feel just that much cooler, and you'll feel a lot better knowing that all your stuff is protected. You double sleeve your cards with Ultra Pro stuff, and that stuff is never going to get damaged ever, probably. Uh, but it'll, it'll take a heck of a lot in order to get your cards <laughs> damaged if you double sleeve with Ultra Pro products for sure uh, they got sales all the time on their website excellent selection so again ultrapro.com slash command we've talked a lot about uh magic today we've also talked a lot about doctor who yes so i kind of wanted to talk about doctor who for the end step real quick doctor who right yes so this is this is the ninth tenth eleventh yeah. doctor uh what episode would you recommend? Waters of Mars. Waters over what? Say it again. <laughs> the Waters of Mars. The Waters of Mars. There that is, is a card. There is a card based on this, right? Yes, I, I believe so. It's the one yeah. that turns things into islands. Yeah, is it, that it? Yeah, because it's the the whole premise of the episode is that the Doctor goes to Mars and it's the first human colony on Mars. Yeah, and he comes in like uh, it's a couple days before everybody dies in a tragic explosion nobody knows what happened mm -hmm. but he's like oh i gotta get out of here before whatever that thing happens because this event causes humans to travel out into space like that is what encourages humans Ooh. to discover other things right so he's like i can't touch this event um so what happens is that the water infects people and turns them into monsters and so everybody is scared of water which sounds like the most ridiculous thing but the episode does a great job at making you scared of water mm -hmm. and when you sit down and think about it yeah water is scary because it is persistent water will just keep flowing keep coming you block it up and then the water will slowly eat through things over time like water can carve mountains if given enough time so I, I, it's just very, very scary. Also, there's and a, let's put we'll put the card on screen. Uh, but the this could the card design for this one is really neat. Yeah, because it's it's like I it's I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. So I'm sorry if this is not exact. But it uh, at some point I think it's upkeep. You choose a creature and it becomes a copy of waters or of, of Mars. Waters uh -huh. over Mars. Uh, or you choose a land and that becomes an island and it has island walk. Yeah. So you can give them evasion so you can attack through 
and and like they're unblockable or you can make more of these cards that are also turning everything into these cards yeah which is sweet yeah and, and a mess yeah and, and is that episode, in this deck i hope so yeah well it would definitely have to be yeah and the episode hits super hard because this is like a moment when the doctor has no companion so you, even if you're coming in fresh you don't really have to get attached to anybody uh you kind of get introduced to the doctor in and of himself um and he eventually says oh well i am a time lord i can do whatever the heck i want and the captain of the base is like no you shouldn't and Mm -hmm. so he's like yeah but i'm gonna save everybody and she's like no you shouldn't he does it anyway and saves everybody and then she's like no this this is wrong Mm -hmm. and then she goes to her house back on earth and you hear a gunshot and i'm like dang doctor who gets dark in this one oh he's like did gosh. i go too far and yeah. like this entire episode just gives me chills what doctor so good is it? that's david tennant david tennant yeah great it's uh near oh, the end of one? his tenure Sounds so like a, like a black mirror kind of is honestly yeah. <laughs> well before we go we want to say thank you to our amazing team here at the command zone thank you to damon lentz eric lem megan yip garab galati J- jordan pridgen jamie block arthur meadowcroft vance and long jake boss sam waldo evan limberger craig blanchett katie cole mitch trafford gabriel pozos josh lee quiet jimmy wong and to josh murphy hello you have a busy schedule right now thanks for taking the time to upgrade yeah, and no talk doctor, doctor who with us anytime you say doctor who i say when Dr. Wen. <laughs> Dr. Wen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have many more Doctor Who based episodes coming up with more budget upgrades coming up soon. So keep an eye out for that. And stay tuned. Stay tuned. For Dr. What. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Bye. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>